Welcome to the big one. Uh, this is the Trash Bowl European Champion Houston faces the America's Champion Agent PWE, or as he said, Agent Peewee. And today, once again with me, I have Sparrowhawk1 as guest commentator. Yep, uh, glad to be, be here again, and uh, great to see these two competitors make the finals. They've been um, fighting hard this tournament and definitely deserve their place here. Whoever wins uh, deserves the title of Trash Bowl Champion. And that is what it's all about, the Trash Bowl Champion. Roll in the Discord server and a small prize as well. Um, Sparrowhawk knows what the role feels like, of course, um, having gotten that by becoming the European Champion in the first Trash Bowl when we didn't have the... Champion vs. Champion match really planned. And Spectation mode seems to work. Isn't that great? I'm currently seeing Houston play his Face Hunter and Agent play his Librum Paladin. Houston's also bringing Galakrond, Warlock and Stealth Rogue. Agent is bringing uh, Secret Rogue and Highlander Priest and both Soul Demon Hunters are banned. Yep, and uh, both these uh, players are um, bringing um, decks which aren't terribly common in the tournament. Houston with his uh, Galakrond Warlock, uh, which he's done very well with, and Agent PWE uh, changing his quest druid for the priest. Um, both slightly off meta decks, um, but we've seen them get some very nice wins, and I expect we'll see them featured prominently in this match too. But here we're starting off with the Rune Paladin against the Face Hunter. Yes, exactly. Uh, last game, uh, European final face hunter won this match, so we didn't get to see it lose. And I'm not sure while well, the Thousand can combat the hunter here uh, from this early start, but he had actually got some kind of pressure on his own with the, uh, the priest's taunt there and the broom to clean up the upper tingers, which might come down soon. However, that is a dormant taunt minion, so it might be difficult to get that immediately. Yeah, and he was thinking about playing it on the first turn there, but ended up deciding to go for the mech instead. And he might now think differently about that, but of course now it's all over. He can't really change that. Um, I, I can see how the taunt is, taunt is definitely a very helpful minion to get against a face hunter. Uh, as sort of an anti-aggro card. Just drops on the pen flinger. Yeah, this is... I think a mistake I made in the first match was uh, being a bit uh, free with my pen flinger use and leaving it on the board. It's a very nice tool to have against all the low health minions from the hunter side. And I think that he's scared of the Wolper Wolper Tingers from uh, continually hitting him in the face. Uh, so uh, it's a it's a still still a good move, but uh, he might want to have it later in the match as it goes along. Yeah, as um, we just saw the player of course die immediately, and as you said, you uh, I think you said that in, during the match even when you regretted not actually trying to get as much value as you could have out of the Penflinger, the secret by the way is Pack Tactics, which is good on both minions. Yeah, uh, and he's going to be able to use his Broom now with the Air Raid if he wishes to. I mean, he would have to um, but that's gonna use the air raid if he wants to actually kill the pack tactics copy as well. Uh, assuming he that's goes to the face stalker. But I think that's the minion you would generally go for. Unless he tries for pack tactics against the Leoc and then uh, then kills, yeah, and then actually kills only the face stalker, maybe. So, the secrets on the hunter side here are. Explosive, Freezing, and Pack Tactics. Yeah. Uh, one of each. Which we saw the Pack Tactics already um, come down, so that's not going to be a factor going forward. <coughs> the bow is interesting here to take out the Taunt, and then maybe, depending on how aggressive you want to be, I guess Adorable Infestation makes the most sense either way, instead of the Tour Guide. Hitting... Uh, I, quite, I quite like playing the... The Voracious Reader and the two one-drops there. Yeah, but, but then you but get... We have got the hand side of showing, seeing the Paladin's hand. Yeah, I think uh, the problem with the Voracious Reader is that the Marsul goes to your hand as well. And then he has the Marsul and the bow in the hand and he just draws one card. Ah, oh, that is true. 
Um, I'm, I'm sure he's taking that into account as we see him pull back on that for this turn. Yeah, he, he made he made the play that I suggested here, uh, which I think makes sense. And now it's a bit awkward because I guess he can, if he gets uh, the face soccer, that's great for him because then he can play tour guide and hero power. But either way, he can't really attack with a bow unless he actually uh, decides to get rid of it. Though without any secrets in sight, that might not be the worst play. Yeah, I think that he's just going for the Wolpertinger and probably the Hero Power. Perhaps he might play the two one drops as well. I, I was thinking maybe the two that. one drops and then go for the reader next turn uh, with whatever you draw and probably getting a Hero Part in as well. Uh, quite a yeah, lot of one turn. Yeah, I think I like that. Agent has got a lot of um, good tools there to combat this though. I think we're going to oh. probably see the Big Taunt plus the Librem to clear up one Wolpertinger. And then the turn after, we're going to see the Libram of Hope to heal up. So he's planned out his turns quite well here. Uh, yeah, that seems very reasonable. Uh, Libram of Justice in combination with the Truth Seeker is... also means that he has uh, two more mana to work with next turn to either play down the second air raid or the hero power, or maybe he draws something else that he likes as well. One thing I like about the air raid is that he's got Barov in hand, so... Minions that have, for instance, three health, such as the Gracious Reader and the Dwarven Sharpshooter, are just going to die straight away. Yeah, though, it's if he, work out very nicely for him. If he plays Barov this turn, he can't uh, play the Libram as well. That's one off. Though first day of school does give him a lot of oh, other yes, things to play. True. There's the too too many things to do on the same turn. His hero power can now target minions. That's going to be useful. Yep. Oh, and there's an interesting uh, point you made about Spirit Jailer, where if he plays it, and then he plays a Lura. Wait, wait, does he run a Lura in this? I always get the different uh, Paladin lists confused. Um, I think he will do. I'll just check. Makes sense from two, and he he doesn't he doesn't actually. He runs two Sal Salat's Pride and. Uh, yeah, um, right up to Proof Seeker. Because um, I thought that might be a thing. Because if you if you were in a paladin running it, then the Spirit Jailer could lead to you accidentally uh, actually activating one of the soul shards in the deck instead of a good spell, uh, which would have been a potential mm. really big misfire there. When you just you don't want to just draw a card, you want to actually get one of your big spells on there. But it's a broom variety. You don't run blessings of authority, so it makes sense to not run a Lura either. One question is, uh, in that interaction, which we're not going to see, unfortunately, whether the Soul Fragment would uh, draw a card as well, if it's cast from the deck? I would think so. I don't actually know. Oh, no, 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 the drawing a card is part of the cast when drawn text. So if you play a cast when drawn card mm -hmm. from hand, I think it doesn't draw. Which actually makes it even worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because sometimes you can discover cards from your opponent's deck, for instance, and... Uh, Find yeah. a, a soul shard and your soul fragment. Or from your own. You can't, you can't play, draw a card. We or, or from your own, yeah. We actually saw someone, I don't even remember who it was right, right off hand, but we saw someone earlier in the tournament actually, with a paladin, get a soul shard on his hand, who used it then for an extra pen, uh, penflinger proc, which was really cool. And yeah, that, that doesn't draw a card. Uh, I think that Houston's in a really tough spot here. He's uh. going to get a secret, which is likely going to get... Explosive, I guess. Oh, it has to be because yeah. he's drawn the freezing. But, but he can play freezing at least, but then he would still have to take out all of the small minions for freezing to really matter. I don't see it right now for no. Houston. He can kill command the pupil or kill command hero power one sharpshooter into the 8 8, which is, I guess, a more sensible version of that. Kind of buying him a turn, mm -hmm. but that's exactly the opposite of what you want to do as Hunter. You don't want to be buying yourself turns, you want to dominate and win the match. Yep. Uh, Agents uh, uses resources very well here, getting the counter pressure down, and there's not much that the Hunter can do. Although the Explosive Trap is going to clear up most of this board, and I do expect him to play the Silk Band on the 8-8 just to mitigate that damage. He's choosing instead to take out the 4-5. Interesting decision. Ah, I see, he's going to bump a Dwarf and, and then... Yeah. yeah, 
that kills that as well. Then I mean, he's telegraphing the explosive trap, of course. And Hand of Adal plays around that perfectly. Uh, he's still Adal, not got lethal, though. Pupil, weapon, is lethal. Is it? Oh, 14. Oh, With I didn't weapon, see that. Yeah. For some reason, I... Yeah, of course. 8 um, plus 2. Uh, well played by Agent there. And the Paladin getting the win that uh, I was unable to against Houston's lineup there. Yeah, and early lead for Agent here, and he has the Secret Rogue and the Highlander Priest left to play. Houston still has all three decks, we have not seen the Warlock yet. Which I call out because it seems to be his kind of specialty deck, his... Uh, his more out of the meta thing. Um, he said he just brought it because he actually uh, had played the deck before and he liked it. So... I think we're gonna see him go right back to the Hunter, because... I think the Hunter's got a pretty good matchup against both of those decks. Especially the Rogue, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure about the Priest, but definitely the Rogue. Um, brings out oh, the, Warlock. the Warlock. Against the Priest of all things, which means that... Yeah, we're seeing the heaviest control decks on both sides of the matchup right now. This should be the longest game yep. in the entire match. Um, I, I should hope so. Unless we... Oh, unless one of them loses and plays a longer game. But definitely the two control control, control decks here. Yeah, sometimes you can draw out a loss against control, but... This is, mm -hmm. is probably at least the longest one until it is almost decided, even if it isn't a direct win in the uh, other games. Whenever you're behind, as we saw with the Hunter, there's basically no way of coming back sometimes. And Houston does not want to... Uh, lose this game here because then he has to sweep the rogue, which is a uh, definitely not an easy thing to do. Rogue yeah. can always get that win. <clears throat> and of course, uh, important to note, Yusin got a very fast starting hand, but Aiden's is nothing to scoff at either. So we're gonna see maybe a faster match than we anticipated. Evasive Worm is a good pickup. That's gonna combat the um, the Galakron Taunt minion, which I've forgotten the name of, um, but everyone knows what it is. Oh, um, yeah, the Shield of Galakrond. The Shield of Galakrond, yeah. yeah. And both players playing it a little bit slow here, just using their hero powers. No reason not to. And I guess we're just going to see a Spirit Jailer and another hero power from Houston. Not necessarily in that order. Yes, he um, he's making sure to tap first so that he doesn't shuffle and draw a Soul Fragment. He drew one anyway, unfortunately for him, because I think he would have liked that here, healing later in the game to perhaps activate the Brittle Bone Destroyers. Yeah. And uh, he does draw the Shield of Galakrond, which we're going to see is going to get immediately countered by the Evasive Worm on turn 5. Speaking Important of Brittle draw, Bone... Though. Yep, it, speak of. And the Morg is also a good draw here, with both Nether Breaths already on hand, all he's missing is a Dragon. We might even see it with the, the Soul Shear. Yeah, and for six. Agent, has he got multiple oozes in his deck, or is that the only one? Oh no, of course, because it's a Highlander deck. It's a Highlander deck. deck. Um, he's only going to have one Does ooze. he have the... I don't think he runs Harrison, but I'm not sure. Harrison Jones he and Cobalt Sticky not. Finger are possible, but generally oozes the preferred uh, thing, because it doesn't waste anything against no... Uh, when your opponent has no weapons. And as you and said, we saw it on turn one. It happened. Ooh, and it cannot be killed by the soul shear, though. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. It, it, it can't be soul sheared. So, it's either plague of flames or you have to actually hit minions in there. Neither of which is a great option right now. I believe the second card from the left is a school spirits, though. So we uh, could no, play that. No, no, no. That's uh, oh, oh it's it? a nether breath. Oh, another breath. I just... It's, it's just two breaths, uh, one plague, now he has two soul shears, Alexstrasza, Moark, Brittlebone, Veiled Worshipper, and that's that. Does school spirits cost two or three? Um... I forget. I think it's three, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Yes, right, it is three. Yeah, tap, that makes sense. Tap Brittlebone, that was the way to go, of course. Um, yeah, that, that makes complete sense. He had no easy, um, clean way of dealing with it otherwise. So, just use a Brittle Bone for that. 
And of course, uh, the Warlock likes having some bodies on the board as well, so... Nice in that regard as well for setting up potentially Plague of Flames in the future, or just... Right now, just slapping the opponent in the face, making some trades, maybe. And of it might course, be helpful to look at the clear as possible for the priest side, because the Highlander deck doesn't have that many. And you see the Wretched Tutor on the far left, which is going to deal with a lot of 1-1s one at some point in this game. Yeah, I mean, 1-1s <laughs> one -one is one of the few things that the, uh, that the Warlock does very consistently. There's a little bit of Fragments, there's a little bit of Invocation, there's a little bit of everything, but there's a lot of 1-1s. One and that's the trick of the deck, is just outlasting all your removal. Speaking of, and you, you can picked get up, the wins. <laughs> you picked up a tour guide for extra 1-1s. One oh no, that just, that's for a draw, isn't it? What? I mean, the oh, draw, oh, oh, oh draw yeah, yeah, of course, with one the Gallicron to your power. Yeah. What? Oh, the 1-1, one -one, yeah. He, that, he's that's a what you woman mean, himself. Yeah. I mean, generally, I mean, even if it was 2 health. But yeah, there, there's already 3 one ones on the board, and... If he hits the Brittlebone into the 1-2, Wretched Tutor is going to be really good. Hits the 1-1 uh, Or instead. the Breath of the Infinite. But for yeah. sure you play the, the Wretched Tutor first. I Dragon mean... Queen Alexstrasza activating Ooh, yeah. the Cleric of Scales. Yeah, that's true. And of course, Houston knows that his opponent has a lot of ways to deal 2 damage, so he sacks the 2 one ones rather than the 3-3. Three -three. Despite the 3-3 three -three not dying, it would kill down to 2 health, so... And Agent just picking himself up a tour guide. Yep, just settling for the 1-1. One, one. And Penance deals we with the 3-3. We might three, see three. Draconic. I would take the Draconic. Oh, of course, to be mana efficient here. I think in the long run you would take the studies, though. I can see it, though. You already have your activation for the Cleric, so it's not as pressing. P Pick Shadow it goes Death. for neither. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't you love it when that happens? Yep. Speculating about two cards and, of course... Agent PW knowing better picks the third. All three cards were good there. We had arguments we could make for any of those. And there's definitely some uh, death targets in the deck, and he's healing the Brittle Bone Destroyer. Death's just good manners. Great play. Making sure that he uses all his mana on turn. It's mana efficient, it's friendly. What else could you hope for? And that's another Galakrond activator. We've got the Devoted Maniac on the far right. Exactly, Galakrond. And he just needs one more to draw before he can get a full Galakrond. Yeah! That's something. Um, oh boy. You could hit the 1-1 one -one in and play the Tutor and the Breath, but that seems a bit overkill. Um, mm. And then play the Cleric of Skills to oh. draw another yeah. spell. That seems to be exactly what he's doing. Cleric of the Scales draws another spell. It's a shame he has to use uh, two board clears there, but uh, yeah, I also it was thought important to get that down. I thought he might not want to do it, but... He saw it as necessary. Hmm. We might see a raised dead here. Definitely raised dead or apotheosis. He's got the death already. Yeah, I don't think he needs two of those. Apotheosis right now. does activate uh, the the Sethic. Correct. That's true. So he could go off there. He does also have a renew, which could potentially activate it as well. But yeah, he's going for that line. And there's the school spirits. Uh, a little bit later. Than you wanted it before, but maniac. Yeah, and... I'm, not, I'm not familiar with the, the the warlock soul fragment cards. Yeah, Actually, Mani... should be more maniac and soul and soul shear. I think is going to be good against the the two five. You can just leave the one one stick around, and of course, extra mana for tapping. Yeah, saving the nether breath for a. Uh time when he can use them on face. And he has got the Alexstrasza in his hand, which he might be able to combo over a couple turns. Yeah, I mean, he can also coin out one of the dragons or even play the broomstick, but that seems does seem necessary. Rockness is potentially interesting. But... I think he just plays it for tempo here. Although it does run into Plague of Flames, but there's not minions on the Warlock side. 
to kill those two. Yeah, um, Evasive Worm normally would have had a lot of better targets, but against the Warlock in particular, there's always going to be 1-1, one, one, so unless you combine it with the Breath, it's never going to be great, and we already saw the Breath, so I can see why it's Very nice draw here. there, the Brittle, Brittle Bone Destroyer. Bone. Yeah. We might see he's got a 10 card set, right? Uh, yes he does. Does he have a- oh, so he, has he can't a, tap first. He has the Nether Wing though, so he can actually Moark Nether Breath to kill the, um, to kill the Alexstrasza. With one card. Yeah. Well, effectively one card, oh, Moark, of course. And then Brittle Bone is active for the, um, for the 6-5, for the Rock Nest. I think we might actually see that. Although, we, he can't play... Oh no, yes, uh, 2 plus 4, um, plus 6, 8. Well, it, yep. it, it's 10 if he yeah, also yeah, taps. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and he can tap there as well. Yeah, so he taps first so he can get the full heal off of it. Uh, no, he doesn't, okay. Um, tap last to get the, <laughs> um, the card yeah. at the end of the turn, and he, he, he recognizes the now. mistake. Uh, what he should have done, so as you said, uh, just to clarify, play the mark, then tap, and then play the rest, because of course you can't. Uh, tap before you play the more piece of board space. Yeah. Um, small misstep there. But he's... He's only lost 2 health from doing that, so... Yeah, and... He sh that shouldn't matter too much. And facing a control deck, I don't think it matters a lot. Uh, if he was facing uh, an aggro deck, that might be a bigger misplay, but... It's relatively minor. Um, Agent rolling the Sethex here... Not getting a lot of stuff that he's looking for. Very and nice uh, pick up there. There was the, was that the breath of luminance or um, to copy the the Sethic? Uh, gift of luminance. Yes. Gift of luminance. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a good pick up. Uh, the rest kind of meh, but he still has the evasive worm to kill the Moark, I suppose. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think he's gonna choose to kill the Moark. Now, he has got a Plague of Flames board here. And a Dragon Black Cultist the activated, yeah. Cultist. I, I think he might just play the Cultist and Plague of Flames. Yeah, I don't hate it. Um, it's a little bit inefficient in that it kills four of your minions, but given there's two Sethex and one untargetable on the board, it's probably worth it. Okay, he's going for the School Spirits. And then I guess hit another wing. Yeah. Yeah. Saving his uh, Plague of Flames for bigger boards. That makes sense. Okay, so he's got full Galakrond should he wish to have it, but he's yet to draw it. Oh, and there's an interesting idea here. Uh, you could Mind Flayer and then uh, use Intimidation on the Mind Flayer, right? Is, is, or is that not what I'm thinking of? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not It's not enemy minion, it's uh, any minion. I don't it's a think card it, that I've not seen much at all. I don't think it would have been the most effective play because you still don't deal with a 5-5, but it would have been an extra 5-5 on your side. Just a thought. And the death rattle is uh, more important here, of course. So there's no reason to kill off the 3-3 when the warlock can't deal with the minion as it is. Yeah, and <laughs> chains together a couple of soul frag. There is more. Yeah, more. Yeah, it's got a lot in there, to be fair. That just completely undid that small misplay about the healing, oh. by the way, because he's back to full anyways. Yep, and he's drawn almost, I think, that's all the Soul Fragments, surely. Uh, I actually don't know, but he only has four cards left in this deck, so it makes sense that he would draw them all. That could be dangerous. He has got the Galakrond and the Kronks to combo right after. There is a mind Of course, also Alastraza. Now, it is very hmm. reasonable to assume oh. that your opponent has the has the Galakrond, right? Because he only has four I, cards left okay. in his deck. Can you afford to do it? Um, he, he's, hmm. he's virtually guaranteed he's to have either Galakrond or Kronks. And it might be worth it. Oh, what a board. Oh, what a play there. Yep, I think... Oh, wait, is that a fully activated one, of course, as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Claw on everything. 
Steam card. That. Wow. Oh, that, and that's, oh, and whoa, that's, that's a high roll. That's two. That's about the best demon you could possibly yeah. get. Now, now he runs. First, the... first, first of all, I saw the two six, which uh, was going to clear the board anyway if he attacked into it. But was... the vile hound. Yeah, I, w I was going to hit the, uh, oh. the the mind flare into the worshipper if I was aging, but otherwise, I love how I played this, just leaving all the one health minions alive. Now, do you play the soul mirror here? Uh, I. I think you might. Plague of Flames? I think might be better. No, um, no, he doesn't have Plague of Flames because he just switched hands. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Plague of Death. Uh, Plague of Death. Plague of Death. Hmm. I, th I think he has to play the Soul Mirror just so that he has a board to contest this. Well, if he plays Plague of Death, there is nothing to contest, right? That's the the other idea. That is that. But what, what else can he do afterwards? Uh, Either drop down the broom or play the Radiance. Uh, the Radiance is better no, for him. I mean, as in, like, on his, on his next turn. Um, oh. What a... Wait, he's not playing the Radiance? I guess okay. he I guess he thought it was more valuable to remove the wave rather than heal health for himself. And Zephyrus is a big pickup here for um, Agent. Um, no way to make 12 damage happen off of that immediately, but still... Big draw. Yeah, I mean, Kronks... I'm sure he's been keeping track of the cards that were in his hand there. Yeah, and Kronks doesn't do anything uh, for Houston now, because he never played the Galakrond. Just looking for a Tyrion, perhaps? Yeah. Yep. That weapon is going to get a few more swings. Now, of course, Houston can't clear over the board, but as you already said, the weapon is the really devious part about this. Uh, I assume we're gonna see a play okay, of flames uh, here. Yeah, but this is definitely gonna go the priest way. Although he looks a bit different right now after <laughs> that Elysia play. Yeah, uh, he's not gonna generate a lot of cards anymore. But renew would now actually, I believe, it just has to discover a spell, so it would actually give him uh, warlock spells because the Galapron does change his class. Oh, that is true. Um, my, my argument for the Soul Mirror was that I think most of the board was going to die on both sides. And after the Galakron is played um, by your opponent, you've not got much to um, many threats that you can actually challenge. So, although it is risky and it would just die to Plague of Death the turn after, it might give you some initiative in, in order to uh, rebuild your board. Yeah, that. That's true. Um, but I think that either way he was going to lose. <laughs> Veiled Worshipper is... Uh, is it killing him? No, not not quite. It's just, it just draws. He still has four cards? Did he shuffle? Oh, he shuffled more fragments. So, Veiled Worshipper would deal one damage to him, which is not exactly what he's looking for. Uh, but then again, he doesn't really have anything else either. And the Crazy Netherwing kills him too, because... Yeah, uh, the weapon just gonna kill him afterwards. Yeah, and Veiled Worshipper, even if he could clear the board after, he takes five from the weapon and then another two from Fatigue the turn after. So he dies no matter what he does, basically. Um, we might see a hero power and Alex to save himself and then uh, play the Plague of Flames. Ooh, Ooh. He did actually end up of getting course. three. Oh, three shards in his deck, I didn't even realize. His entire deck is charged. Yeah, but they're all going to be drawn then. Yeah. He's not going to get the power off. Okay, so 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Two off. Um, and Houston heals six on the draw, but then takes one from the fatigue. So he'll go up five. So there is no, like, damaging him now. So he fatigues next turn. Right. I think we might see a... Uh, oh, he's Master Spelling to draw a card. Cobalt Spelkin. Could give him an Inner Fire oh, to win no, the no, game. No, 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 no. It could, it could give him... Oh. Uh, ah. Yeah, I was about to say it could give him Soul Fire. That's what it could give him. Oh, yeah, you mentioned this earlier, is that yeah. he's now counted as a Warlock. Exactly. <laughs> I think we're going to see an Honorable uh, Tap. Um, well, Tap... Because nothing else can be... 
yeah, tap into nothing to tap draw into fatigue. Because... Tap doesn't kill him. Uh, Veiled Worshipper will kill him, though, I think. Wait, Veiled Worshipper is... Oh, Veiled, Veiled Worshipper, yeah. Is We're two, discussing three, the best four? way to, to kill himself. Yeah, it would have been 9 damage with the Veiled Worshipper. And, dude, yeah. this is not... Uh, I, I was just about to be like, where's the Warlock on Agent's lineup? We're gonna have to check it off, but uh, yeah, there we go. It's a priest, technically. Um, wow. As you said, it's gonna be rough uh, for Houston now, having to try to sweep the rogue. It's not a situation you want to be in. No, definitely. And uh, interesting, uh, a tech-ish sort of card, but I think we're seeing it more not more now, is the Cult Neophyte on the rogue side. Yes. Which uh, deals very well with uh, um, spells that might help to clear minions. Rogue oh, we're Mirror. going for the Rogue Mirror. Now, Agent is bringing the Secret Rogue, whereas Houston is bringing the Stealth Rogue, so not a true mirror in that sense, but of course, I feel like almost out of Houston's lineup, the deck that gets hurt most by the Neophytes. With all of the small spells, um, with the Evises and the Cold Bloods and the Secret Passages. Backstab. Uh, that is true, but uh, I think that the because the Stealth Rogue has more damage output, <laughs> The Edwin and um, Questing Adventurers coming down won't make as big an in impact when you're sitting at 12, 13 health and can die over two turns. And that's the power that the Stealth Rogue can put out. Just see, see we, are, we see, we see a, a strong uh, Edwin turn perhaps coming up, but... Uh, Unless if he can't kill those minions. I was about to say, unless he coins the uh, weapon here, but he doesn't quite go there. Delinquent comes down now. Hmm. Do you think it's better to just play the secret or uh, weapon up, or he could coin the evil miscreant? I like uh, I like the weapon here. Secret would have also worked, but draw is not what he needs right now, and he wants to kill the minions and. I think he might want that Edwin turn, so then he can't play Miscreant. Oh, Yeah, I think he will play the Worgen, but um, that's two combo cards in his hand, which he's gonna have to draw something else to combo them in the next turn. Well, uh, pretty much anything but Passage works, so... Well, or like Scorpid, oh. but that might work on its own. One Thief will activate the Vendetta, and then he'll be able to play it for free and yeah. put down an Edwin. I think we might even see a Shadow Step, Shadow step the on the Wand Thief. Yeah. Frost Nova is a good pickup. Being able to freeze the stealth minions. Ice Barrier. Definitely. Hmm. So and now he is actually on quite low health, but that's a big Edwin coming down. Yeah. 10 10? 12 12. 12 12. But now if you're Houston, there's kind of two routes you can go. Try to find a way to kill it. Or just, you know, if you can't have uh, minion removal, use player removal, right? Just kill him. Just. You have two turns. Well, actually, you have three turns, technically. Uh, to just try to win. I think that he's going to play the Stealth Minion and Cold Blood up the 2-1 and Attack Face. Because he's saving up his damage for next turn. Unfortunately, the uh, Agent has picked up two amazing Mage spells to deal with the damage. Yeah. Either from Minion or from Hand. Well, the Frost Nova, uh, the yeah. Asperger doesn't get activated from Evasis, so there is that. But he would still have to go down to as low as what, eight for that to actually work from hand, so... Those were some amazing cards to pick up for from uh, the Wand Thief. Yeah, that's true. If you could choose the mage spells you wanted, you would have chosen those exact two. I'm uh, pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, uh... Cone well, of Cold I isn't much better. Maybe uh, Arcane Explosion, but... No, I, I like Frost Nova better than the um, Corner Cold, especially when you've got an Edwin on board. Yeah. And you want to be mana efficient. I, I might like Arcane Explosion over Frost Nova because it kills almost everything your opponent's going to be able to put out, anyways. But. Oh, that is true. That's a small difference. 
It's one, it's one mana cheaper, but it's not quite as reliable, but it is more permanent. But yeah, I think just... Backstab, Ice Barrier, and just start hitting, right? Yeah, I think that Ice Barrier is better to play here than the Frost Nova. Because it gives you just a, an extra turn to get the damage in. Yeah, and, and especially with, might choose to... with the backstab, he doesn't have to deal with the... Uh, he does. He, he only lets one minion stick around, so... Instead of preventing a three with the Frost Nova effectively, he now prevents eight. Yeah. Um, so here he's definitely going to play as a as Great Heart Sage to draw cards. Yeah. And I think he knows what that secret is. Could it's be one of two. It's either going to be the Flame Ward or it could be kind of spell. That's true. Because uh, counter spell would also keep four damage off your face most of the time, so that was definitely something to consider if you're used to. Hmm. Twelve health is still uh, definitely not enough to um, be safe at for agent side, but with the frost nova, he's mitigating a lot of damage that could come from Houston, and as we can see. Yeah, we've got four, eight. That's, eight. that's even if yeah. he gets a one car, one cost thing. That's not nope. it. Yep, that's game. Is that? Uh, un yep, un unless Agent uh, somehow managed to miss lethal here. <laughs> uh... I I don't think at this level of play that happens. I mean, we have some yeah. missed lethals, but it's a it's a, it's a joke. Um, but not but not yep. not those kind of lethals. Well done. Have Trades we very effectively. ever seen a trash ball that was quite that one-sided? Um, I think th this this game was definitely um, quite one-sided, um, partly due to the pickups from the Wand Thief, but um, the, the second game with the, the Priest uh, was definitely a Lucia, and he played it at the perfect time. So although we, we could say that um, it was fortunate that um, um, he, that Euston didn't draw the Galakrond earlier, um, Agent definitely picked the exactly right time to, to play it, which was bad for Houston, but very well played by Agent there. Yeah, um, um, this might be the first 3-0 trash pull, I don't know. Hmm. I, I think we've seen 3-1s in the past. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely seen 3-0s uh, happen in earlier rounds, but I don't think we've actually seen it in the big one. Um, I feel like I would know it if we did. This is only the fourth one. Um... But anyways, um, yeah, what a match. Um, uh, like the video if you enjoyed this craziness. Um, leave us comments uh, once the premiere is over. And uh, otherwise, of course, I forgot to mention at the beginning, but we're going to premiere this video. There's live chat on the side. Um, You've probably noticed by now. Or not. Um, and, you know, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Hearthstone content. If you want to... Keep up with our other stuff like the podcast and some of our other miscellaneous content. That is all now going to Trash Can TV 2, we announced in the most recent podcast. So subscribe to that channel as well if you don't want to miss anything out. And um, yeah, I think that's all the things I want to say. Sparrowhawk. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, enjoyed. Oh, wait, am I saying that's it now or am I? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you can say something else first if you want to, uh, but. Oh, no, I was just going to um, thank all the competitors of the Trash Bowl this year. Um, uh, this year, um, this uh, this expansion, we've had a great tournament, um, some great matches coming out, and uh, a great final there. Um, un unfortunate for Houston that um, he um, got got swept there, but uh, definitely a, a worthy finalist there and worthy winner. So congrats again to Agent, congrats to Houston, and um, just reminding you that uh, this is an interesting parallel that Houston and Razvan were um, our, our friends. And Agent and Lil Neko are friends. So we've yeah. had, like, it's it's a similar final to the last time as well, in that way. That's um, true. I wonder if we'll, we'll see, see them um, near the top again next next time. Um, and I but think for this now... breaks the pattern of alternating uh, EU and uh, America's winners, doesn't it? We had America's in the first one, EU in the second one, Amer America's in the, f in the third one, and then America's again in the fourth one. 
Yep, America's up 3-1, which is a... Uh, I mean, a well, 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 well played to the Americas. They've, they've got some uh, amazing players on that side, and we've got amazing players on the Europe side as well. But um, America's definitely um, doing well with building those um, great lineups for the tournament. Yeah. So let's rise again. Sparrowhawk. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs>